Hi, George here. And today we're going to be doing a vertical panorama inside of Photoshop Elements. Something that you can't normally do since Elements is designed to do horizontal panoramas. But I'll show you the trick in here. Now the picture I'm using is one that requires a vertical panorama. Of course, I could have turned my camera sideways and taken the shot that way or used my smartphone. But I wanted the higher resolution having overlapping images. So here is the middle of this image. You can see we have a waterfall here we're looking through. Japanese garden in the background. And my back is up against the back of this kind of an alcove area here to look through the water. So that's as far back as I can get with a regular normal lens right there. And here is the picture for the top of the waterfall. And notice the lantern right down here. Same lantern right there. So that's how much overlap I have. Quite a bit of overlap, which is what I want. And then here is the bottom of the waterfall. Now to make this whole thing work, because Photoshop Elements only does horizontal panoramas, I'll have to turn these pictures on their side. And they have to all be turned the same direction. So I'm just going to rotate them left by 90 degrees. Go up here to Image, Rotate. In this case, this one only has just the one layer. So I'll just rotate 90 left. There we go. Notice how it doesn't quite fit. I'll have to adjust my window a little bit. And this back out a touch to get that all in there. There we go. There's the 90 left. Notice I have all of these as floating windows. Makes it just a little bit easier when you're working with multiple images like this. And her floating windows, that's up here under Edit. And Preferences, General. That's a checkbox right there. Allow floating documents in advanced mode. Make sure that's checked. Okay. Image, Rotate, 90 left. There we go. Same thing. I could stretch this out, but I'm not going to worry about that. There we go. That's the 90 left. And then the final one right here, this is the top. Image, Rotate, 90 left. And I'll back out on that one. There we go. Now, after I finish this, I'll be putting these images up and also the final Photoshop file into the Photo Coach. You can then download all these resources right there if you want to. Okay, so we have them all rotated. Let's kind of visually line these up. So that's about like that. And then this one's going to be coming in, looks like right around here. I'll back up just a touch there. That's a better alignment. So something like that's kind of how it's going to be lining up. So we have those all set to go. Now, before you can do the panorama, because we've made a change in here, we have to save these files. Go ahead and save these. I'll start over here, left-hand side, and I'll do File, Save As. And I'll put them right here into a working folder I have for guided edits. And choose Save. We'll clear to the top on that one, and OK. Next one over here, Save As. And same folder, same thing. And the last one, once again, File and Save As. Now, if you're going from one folder to a different folder, you may have to navigate to your folder. I was already set up here, so didn't need to change my folders. Save, and there we go. Okay, everything's all set. We can now go up here to Guided Edit. That's right here where it says Guided. And you want the Photo Merge Panorama. Also, double check that all of your images are showing down below here, bottom left-hand side. And let's select all these. Click on the left one, hold the Shift key down, click on the far right one, and they're all selected. Make sure you see that blue outline around them. That's good. We can now go inside of the Photo Merge Panorama. Okay, right-hand side, we have Panorama Settings, Auto Panorama. This is almost always the right choice. So you can pretty much just ignore that. If it's not exactly what you want, you can experiment by trying some of these other settings in here. But I've always left mine at Auto Panorama. Down under Settings, a few options. We want to blend the images together because they will be slightly different. This will make a perfect panorama. If there's any darkening on the corners in here, you may want to use Vignette Removal. I don't see any darkening, so I'll leave that one alone. Geometric Distortion Correction is in case the perspective has shifted. Now in my case, I was looking straight forward for the middle shot. I had to tilt the camera up for the top shot and tilt it down for the bottom shot, which is this shot here. And by doing that tilt, there is a perspective change, so there is some geometric distortion in there. So I'll go ahead and have that one checked. And we may also have some overlap isn't exactly right on the sides. or maybe some blank space left open. Just in case, I'll go ahead and I'll check this one OK. When everything is set, just click on Create Panorama. And Photoshop Elements will go through and do the whole process here, making our panorama file. It brought them all into one file. It's then now aligning the images together. you putting in a mask on that. And then the final thing was filling in any edges with content aware fill. And there's that panorama. It looks great. It's sideways, of course. Before I go any further than this, the area up across the top up here where you see these little marching ants, this little selection area, this is the area where there was no image in here and they were doing an overlap on that area. 
So part of that will be taken from the other images. Part of that will be content aware fill. Okay, that looks good. Let's take this over to in advanced mode. Click on the right hand side there. There we are. Here's the advanced mode. And you can see there is the image without that. So all of that area up in here and down below here, that was all filled in with that content aware fill. That's why I used that one. If you want to, you can look at the individual images. And what Elements does is it goes in and it tries to find a really good spot to come in and make the overlap on those. So you could say seamless overlap happening. It does a very good job at that. Okay, so there's a panorama. Let's bring our finished one up here. I use Control D to deselect that. Now, of course, this image is sideways. So we need to re-rotate the image again. Go up here to Image, Rotate. This time we're going to the right 90 degrees. There it is, I'll back out just a little bit. And there's our beautiful vertical panorama. Now we can go further than this. The contrast could use some help on this one. So I'll close down these back images. Let's just get these out of the way. We're done with those. Okay, and let's do some adjustment in here on the contrast. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. I'll just use previous layer on that. And a little more on the black, just a touch, just a hair. And lighten the whole image up a bit here and balance in some more of the darks. And that's looking pretty good. And a little bit more on the light side, just basically boosting the contrast carefully. And I think that's a much nicer image. Let's check this before and after. You see how much that is helped by doing that. If you want to, you can also bring in a little bit more saturation. This was taken in the summertime in Southern California, it tends to wash out the colors a little bit, I found. So let's close this one down and go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and we want Hue Saturation. And I'll check that checkbox, choose OK. Just a little bit more saturation, just a touch, it's not much. So there's before and there's after. It's subtle, but it does make it look a lot more vibrant. And there you go, there's a vertical panorama. Easy to do, just a couple of extra steps to be aware of. And again, if you want to get this working file here and the original images for this one image, I have all that in the photo coach. I'll put that up before I post the video up. I'll also put in a step-by-step -step in there so you don't miss any steps. And I'll put a link for the photo coach at the top of the description in case you don't already have that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.